All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, today is National Science Day. On February 28th each year, it marks a special celebration for Indians. It's the anniversary of the day Indian physicist Sir C.V. Raman made a significant scientific discovery. Today, National Science Day showcases the importance of science in every life or everyday life and gives regular people an opportunity to see how scientific innovations can improve lives and encourage societal development. I mean, I don't think we can overemphasize what science has, you know, done for us as a people, how it has helped to change our lives, you know, so many things that, you know, um, we thought were impossible, but, you know, with the advent of science, it has really, really given us, you know, transformation generally, right, um, in our lives. So. I know that um, India has one of the brightest minds when it comes to anything academics and all of that. So it's not a, it's not uh, what's it called um, a surprise to me that they have dedicated this day to you know science, right? So I mean, I don't know how about I don't know about you guys, but I know how much science has impacted in my life. You know, <laughs> I used to say that if I was in a different climb where education was probably priority and all of that i'll probably be a pure scientist because that was how much i loved experiments i loved you know just trying out new things and all of that but again when you go to when you stay in an educational system where it you're only encouraged to just regurgitate you know just cram it That's and ridiculous. just go and you know regurgitate and uh, yeah. so it just discourages every fiber of curiosity in you and i think what fuels science is the curious Experience, mind, yeah. right? So it is when you're curious as a person, then you then decide to say, you know what, I want to go and experiment what, what is in my head, you know? And we, we barely have those opportunities here with our educational system. And that's why you see a lot of young people that leave this country that have that kind of capacity, a lot of them are, are doing exceptionally well. You know, go and check the brightest mind in Silicon Valley. Most of them are Nigerians. So, I mean, when we say certain things, you know, I'm moving to governance now. When we say certain things, you know, it just affects everything, right? As simple as, you know, just basic everyday life, it affects us. So science is important, you know, and I hope that we can also improve and get to celebrate a day as well in Nigeria where we would bring out all the bright minds that we have in that regard. Because I didn't have what's in the news, I have taken up my time. <laughs> All right, so Angie, what did you find for us in the news? Um, so uh, my what's in the news today, it's a report about how two voters were reportedly shot dead by hoodlums at the polling unit in Edo State. So um, this story um, took place, obviously, on, on Saturday, the 25th of February where Elizabeth Osadebe Wen, I hope I got that right, Go ahead. went to cast her vote um, at Ogege on Sapler Road in Benin City. Osadebe Wen, go ahead. Thank you. After voting, you know, she remained there to monitor, and during that time um, that passed, there was a fracas and the polling unit was attacked by hoodlums, just like we saw uh, all over social media happening in, in different states. And in that process, you know, there was a shootout. They were shooting in the air and all that. And she and another, um, another individual whose name was not, you know, mentioned were part of the casualties hmm. of the election day hmm. and um, it just this is just one of the we have different ways that we are mourning we are more, some of us are mourning the election results and some of us are mourning actually mourning lives are, actually mourning lives people that lost their lives and they were just coming out to carry out their civic duties so our heart goes out to her family and we pray that um, they would be consoled during this time for this kind of and loss. I hope they bring those people to book. I hope so. That's mm -hmm. a tall order. Because there's nothing like, you know, injustice when we don't even find the people that, you know, perpetrate some of these crimes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jennifer. 
So um, fire guts tanker under Blue Line Rail Bridge. So LASIMA, which stands for Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, in a joint operation with the state's fire and rescue service, were able to put out um, a fire that engulfed the gas tanker. So basically what they said was that there was a spark from a generator nearby which um, caused the fire. But we thank God that there were no um, there were no casualties, nobody died, so they were able to put the situation under control. Praise the Lord. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, your story, Mary. Um, following the Turkey earthquake, Nigeria donates $1 million to Turkey. The federal capital minister, Bello, and other delegation were received by the Turkish Foreign Affairs Minister and they expressed their condolences from Nigeria on behalf of the president and they were handed a they handed the promissory note of one million dollars to Turkey, you know, as rescue for their citizens from the earthquake. It's a very sad story. Um, I'm also surprised that we can give such an amount, but um, you know, that is very good. I was also told that um, the first lady had also donated ten thousand blankets on behalf of the African First Ladies Forum to so the humanitarian efforts in the country. So. It's good that we're doing the Lord's work out there. That's very nice. Which first lady? Our oh, first lady. Yeah. And you also to say something interesting. I, what you know when Mary said, <laughs> I was I'm I'm perplexed. I'm actually quite surprised that we have that much to give to give, and we can't even properly appropriate the ones that are no, here let, for the people. Not, let's not do that. But no, I, it was just the statement that <laughs> came to mind. It would definitely cross your mind. I mean, is it to lend a helping hand and to help those in need, is that a good thing? Yes, I mean, we would definitely applaud that. But I honestly did not know that we had... To that amount. One million dollars, dollars to give out. It's okay. That's how surprised you would be if you see a beggar with, you know, a bundle of 1,000 arrows. You're looking at him like, did you steal it or is yours? So, yeah. So when, when that story broke about the Turkey and the president, you know, giving them, donating a million dollars to Turkey, somebody said, ah, ma, I didn't know that Nigeria, you know, could afford that, you know. I mean, and, and it's interesting that I'm hearing you, you all talk about it this way, because again, to the, to the average man, the, the picture has been painted is that Nigeria is broke, Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that, and you would think that, you know, um, in terms of managing of resources and all of that, were there other things that we could have done apart from just donating money? Uh, were there other forms of assistance? Because again, I think it's a Nigerian thing for us to always feel like every problem, we just need to throw money at it, right? There's a problem, there's a major problem in Turkey. There are other forms of, of assistance that could happen, right? Uh, for a country that you know that you have a lot of internally displaced people mm -hmm. within your country, a lot of people are not able to feed, a lot of people are living, we have millions of people living under the poverty line, right? The poverty markup, you know, based on global standards, right? Are not able to have a decent meal per day. And then you now go to do play Big Brother, while people in your home, right, you know, are suffering, they are not able to access food and all of that. So you see, before an American will carry money and say they are coming to give to Africa, they've also made sure that they have put some things in place in their home. So you see things like open, um, open kitchens, you see things like social securities, you see things like, you know, welfare, where people that don't have job, they give them stipends to be able to at least go to go shop. Sometimes they give them meal vouchers, yeah. they give them shopping vouchers and all of those things. These things exist as social welfare, right, that they give to their citizens. You haven't done any of these things and you decide to say you want to take you know, money. Oh, so that's why a lot of people would have this kind of reaction that, oh, I didn't know we had this kind of money to give because people are actually suffering in Nigeria. You know, and I think, you know, the awakening that has happened, right, within us as, as a people, all of these things, we need to begin to question every single thing. It's not just enough for you to play Big Brother. Have you played Big Brother to the people that are within your country? And are they, you know, being taken care of before you then decide to say you want to take care of those people outside? 
I think those are the kind of questions we need to begin to ask our leaders. Right, on that note, I am calm today, and I pray to stay calm. <laughs> yeah, when we come back, we want to discuss the elections. Stay with us. We'll be right back.